what's up? It's Matthew with Matthew's Rants, Raves, and Reviews. I'm gonna make this a short video. Don't be mad at me. I'm sorry, this was a lot tonight for me. I'm actually still like going over the episode. More than likely, if you watch my Untucked tomorrow, my Untucked uh, Matthew's Rants, Raves, and Reviews, I'm gonna do Saturday. Some of the stuff that I may have like skipped over tonight, I'm going over tomorrow. So again, this is just a brief run through of the show. For those who just watched it that want to go over it, I will talk about the runway looks, most everybody's. <laughs> um, but yeah, I recorded this earlier and it was like an hour long and I just said, I can't, I won't, I'm just going to redo it. So here it is. All right. So Kittens, episode three, this is the sewing challenge that we all have been looking for. This was the draggly ever after. And child, when I tell you, it was about the runway for me. Now... I'm not going to say the, the whole episode was boring. It was not. I just, it was a lot to go over, over some things that we didn't need to talk about. Like, for instance, in No Shade in Anybody here, and again, spoiler alert for those who haven't watched the episode, I felt like, okay, so basically the beginning of the episode is, congratulations, Valentina, you are the best, and we should have taken you more seriously. True, they should have, because Valentina is a fucking threat. Now, Trinity Taylor's like, fuck that. I'm ready to be the winner. I'm putting a lot of my effort into this. We need to get this going. Let's get this gig running. And Trinity Taylor, I saw that good old pageant competition mode come in. Not aggressive and disgusting, but perfectly okay. Because some people get that pageant light and it's like, nah, and that wasn't you. So I was with you on that girl. And I said, okay, that's the beginning of the episode. We're running into this here. Here we go. Uh, so RuPaul comes out, tells the girls, hey, we're doing princess theme. They have to create a fairy tale princess, an original idea, uh, come up with the mythology for the princess, create the outfit, as well as a sidekick, which they then need to create that personality for and also play that character. To Pheromone's dismay, which Pheromone moaned a lot this episode, but not in a sexual way, but in a, oh, oh. Moan. Mo I think one time she did go moan. It was pretty fucking funny. But Pheromone and Kimora Black already state that, baby, we do not sew. This is going to be a rough one for us. It almost felt like, um, shit, it almost felt like, girl, they're going to be in the bottom two no matter what. So this is their episode, bottom two. That's kind of what happened as we continue. Now, so... Asha tells us, baby, I've sewed 95% of my garments. I got this one in the bag. And everybody else is getting their looks together. Eureka's like, honey, I'm going to be the garbage queen. Which, by the way, and again, I'm going through this episode quickly here. So keep up. If you lost, bitch, I do apologize. You should have watched it. Other than that, catch me untucked tomorrow. Continue. Now, Eureka gave us sewer queen today. She said, I'm going to be a sewer princess. I said, okay, we're going to see how this turns out. I was just hoping we weren't going to see the same wig, which we did. The good old ball fade in that top, up, do, up, do. We saw it again. It was a good look. I just wanted a different hairdo. Continuing through the workroom here, Eureka was actually helpful this episode. And why am I saying actually? Like, as if she's not a helpful queen. I don't know that woman. I'm sorry, Eureka. That was stupid of me. Um... Eureka being shown as being helpful was what I liked so much. A lot of us drag fans were taking Eureka as being a loud mouth because it was almost like she was interrupting everybody every single time they were talking or she had to get that last word in. <laughs> but this time they showed her in a different way where she was really helpful to Pheromone because Pheromone had no fucking clue what she was doing. Sorry, Fer, I love you, babe, but you did not know what you, you were like. Uh, so what should I do? Oh, the whining bitch. <laughs> it was actually kind of cute. Like, it wasn't bad. Like, I wouldn't want that around me all the time, but it was it was still cute. It was cute for TV. And um, Eureka was trying to help her with the concept of her look because Farrah was sitting there trying to glue, you know, trying to figure out what am I supposed to do with this fabric? I'm supposed to cut it up. Where am I supposed to put it? You know, uh, Eureka's like, girl, take the fabric you have and glue it. Start gluing your bra. You know, put it on your bra and then start to work around that. And put starfish here, clams there, you know, giving her an idea of what concept she was going for since she wanted to do Under the Sea, which Trendy Taylor had stopped by and said, well, bitch, I'm doing Under the Sea too. And then dipped out. I said, well, Trinity Taylor better have let that bomb drop and kept it moving. Like, I hope you got a good Under the Sea, bitch, because I'm about to bring it. I said, okay. 
But she did also advise that a lot of the other girls were doing it too. So to be like, yeah, if you're gonna do it, you need to pick it up, pick it up. Um, so that was nice to see Eureka in that light. Now, Shay Coulee was like the question lady for the first part of the episode. I don't know if the producers were like, Shay, you're done with your look. Can you just talk to the other girls? Or you look like you're mostly done. Can you talk to the other girls? Because it started with Aja, and then I think it went to Alexis Michelle, and then it went into, um, not went into, but it went to, who else did she, did she talk to after that? Uh, I think it was Kamora Black after that. And I was like, or was it Kamora first, then it was Alexis Michelle. Either way, she stopped and talked to a lot of people and it was question time and they were very detailed questions. And I was just kind of like, girl, that felt very forced. But at the same time, if that was Shea Kool-Aid, then I love it because she was like, really like, so girl, last week you were in the bottom, da 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 da. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so detailed. Um, but it was interesting, the workroom experience they had. They were all working their hardest, getting their looks together. You know, we didn't get to see a whole lot of everybody, you know what I mean, uh, until we got to the runway. Like, Nina Benina Brown wasn't even really shown a lot this episode. I don't know why, because her look was everything. And I was kind of like, well, girl, this would have been the time. But then again, we'll get down to who was safe and who was top three, who was bottom three. One thing I did want to talk about before we get to the runway that I thought was important, outside of the cuckoo story that Cynthia gave that I thought was cute with Kimora Black and the whole, um, she said something, a bad word in front of her mother and the mother said, you know, you can't say that. And so cuckoo was developed <laughs> from that and I thought that was cute. When they brought up the Pulse Club um, shooting that happened in Orlando uh, and Trinity's you know, experience with her being Miss Pulse at one point in time and, um, you know, Cynthia being so close uh, to that club as well and they lost people that they knew or they knew someone who lost someone. Um, it was very touching, it was very sad and Sasha really pointed out that, you know, it was a hate crime and it's something to where we have, have to recognize what it was and, and really, try to prevent these things from happening the best way we have to be and stand with each other. It, that was great. Great moment for television. I was very, I was teared up, I was choked up. It was right, it was good. Now, to this runway, to the runway please, to the runway please. This is a video that I'm barely editing y'all, so I'm getting through this as harshly as I can. So yeah, the runway was pretty fucking good. Everybody was slaying it except for Kimora, <laughs> Farah, and Aja. Really, in all talk, those three were bad. Everybody else was great. Everyone else's looks were fucking incredible. Like, seriously. No, Valentina's, even that one. It was a bathing suit, or a, I guess a leotard with stockings. I don't care. And the wig was a little, mm, but that, that mug was so beat. But I got what she was going for, and her sidekick was funny, so it really brought that all in. It really brought it up and elevated it. Shea Coulee's dress, woo! That dress was sickening. I do, I, be, I believe Shea Coulee was robbed of top three. I don't know if they didn't like the sidekick and the story wasn't as funny as they wanted it to be, but that look, the look, the look was so, oh, it was incredible. Oh, it was incredible. That dress was was gorgeous. If someone says it was basic, I don't care. She made that shit right then and there. It was everything, okay? I thought um, Charlie Hydes was also amazing with the gold. I liked his sidekick, which was, I, I can't remember this right now. My notes, my pad just completely <laughs> died on me here. But um, I believe it was Isabella was the name of the fairy that was her, not her fairy godmother, I think it was like mistress of something, but there was this joke about double entendres and puns. It was fucking hilarious. Sasha Velour's look was f brilliant. A birdcage with flowers coming out of it, with a blonde braid coming down the top and a red braid as the base for the birdcage. Then coming down, this beautiful, oh my God, in the brows. I thought, Sasha Velour, I, if I wasn't a fan before I am today, that was everything. Everything. Okay. Alexis Michelle's look was great. Her face, that paint was so on the money. The wig, the wig, the wig, the wig, the wig was great. The wig was really great. I love the wig. The wig was really great. I did not like the sidekick. 
the hey, I'm the subway tadpole, and I met her on her way to the gig. I didn't get it. I didn't like the story. I thought it was whack. Um, but the outfit was right. Who else can I talk about? Nina Benita Brown came out in this alien um, princess. I think it was Zafina. I can't remember this right now. Again, this is going to be my rush video for y'all. Uh, she came out in that look. And I thought that was really interesting and very different from what everybody else was doing. Please keep Nina Benina Brown long because we need to see that different all the time. Because it's like pretty, 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 pretty. Oh, pretty, 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 pretty. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, and it's still beautiful, but it's this new, it's different. It's a whole nother look, concept, everything. I loved it. Loved it, Nina. Um, but Trinity Taylor, Trinity Taylor, that's who I'm going to talk about. Bitch. Did you see Trinity Taylor's look? My God, that. Before we get into that, Peppermint gave me fire. Peppermint was giving you real fire. The name itself, I am not going to say it on here. I had said it in the last video I recorded about 20 times. I got it right about seven of those 20. Now, Peppermint's, Peppermint's look was good, too. I did see kind of like bathing suit, gold, black, you know, fitted corset, if I'm right on that. And then the tubing, the tube dress that went down all the way to the uh, mermaid um, flare out. Like, I got that. But I like the concept, I like the story, I like the hair, I like the makeup, I liked Petey the, Petey the Pilot Light. Like, I remember that, you see what I'm saying? Like, everything was memorable about what Peppermint did. So I loved what Peppermint brought to the table, and I'm glad that she was in the top three. I was like, girl, come on now, put Peppermint in the top, baby. She deserves it. So I was really glad for Peppermint. And um, Valentina was so beautiful. That mug is so beautiful. They, can, they can't touch that mug. They can't touch it. Trinity Taylor. Trinity Taylor, if I had said anything negative about you in any of my other videos, I don't know what to say today that would be negative. I have nothing negative I could possibly say. There is nothing I can say. I have shut me up. <laughs> shut me up because where do we start? I enjoyed seeing when she was running through the workroom and she had to stop for a second to speak and just continue moving. Like, I have a mission and I'm going to win. Like, she was on that mission, y'all. But when that look stepped out on the runway, no one was ready. It was, it was so good. What made it even better was that it was a whole nother look. I thought it was one look coming down, boom, dress. I was like, okay, I totally get the C. But then, click collar, slope. I said, ah, it's a bathing suit. And the body looked really great in that bay. I, I said, okay, come on, Trinity Taylor. <laughs> Birmingham, Alabama, baby. I said, go in, Orlando, Florida. If you didn't know, Trinity started in Birmingham, Alabama. But yeah, Trinity Taylor, that was that was every fucking thing, okay? Hair was everything. It was good. It was good shit. I loved it. Um, everybody else looked great, too, um, except for... Farrah, Moan, Aja, and um, Kamora Black. Kamora Black had some crazy banana story, banana lady thing going on. The monkey was robotic. It was doing all of this. And she wanted to have the, the monkey who was supposed to be her protector of small bananas so she can get the biggest bananas in the jungle. And then Farrah Moan was um, Ariel in a rap dress. Not even a wrap dress, girl. Like, it was pinned together. It was a bra. It was the seashells. It was something that Michelle was pissed to see. Trust and believe. She let her know. Um, and Aja, I like the name. You know, I, I like the name. I like the sidekick. Names. Like, the names and the concept of what she was, I guess, where her thoughts were going. But then it was like the execution was poor and the outfit just didn't give Princess vibe. It gave a whole nother kind of character. But I think that's what she was going for, like a rebel princess and rebel bad chick. And they just weren't buying it. And Michelle got into her for her fucking makeup. And I said, well, girl, yeah, it was rough. 
truthfully, it was rough. It was hard for, I, yeah, I was like, ooh wee, I don't know, sis. But again, I'm rooting for Aja. With with Aja, I'm just like, when is this this confidence that I see, it's right there. When is it going to just translate into everything that is on her? Because like they were saying in the episode, you look good on Instagram or on Facebook or on this and that and the other where you have filters, you have this, you can change this up, da 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 But when you get in public, it's like, hmm. Now, he wasn't, Shay wasn't directly speaking to Audra like, girl, that's, that's your issue. But he was talking about a lot of girls in the industry of drag who are very much, say, famous on social media or whatnot. Um, and they look good on filter, but then in public, it's like, they ain't there yet. So... I guess he's grouping Aja into that because right now the makeup was rough. Um, that pause they gave while they were doing makeup was was rough for her too uh, before they got to the main stage and to do their runway looks. But yeah, I just, it didn't work out, Aja. I'm sorry, babe. But um, those three ended up in the bottom. But here's where the real kicker is. This, this is what really took my grizzle because now... If you're me, you assume Kamora Black and Pheromone are going to lip sync because clearly these girls didn't know how to put nothing together. And I at least could say, we could at least say that Aja put something of it, he sewed some of that together, right? Because he says he sews 95% of his, his things. Okay, so that was that's my thought. I said, okay, well, he at least went for the challenge. These two glued and stuck things together and called it a day. No, no, no. When I tell you, my face cracked like chapstick, bitch. I said, Aja and Farah, mm -mm, scratch, Aja and Kamora in the bottom two? I said, RuPaul and Asia. RuPaul has said, if I'm going to have the song Holding On For A Hero by Bonnie Tyler, then I'm going to have one of these bitches who can lip fucking sink down to do it. Because let us be real, had that been Kamora Black versus Pheromone with that song, did you see any kicks? Did you did you see any splits of any kind of any kind of whack 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 disco? Da you didn't see none of that happening. It was gonna be a soft performance, <laughs> and I love them to death. But that is a song you have to buck to. That is a song that gives you drums. Boom, boom. Like, it gives you the thrill, the rut. Everything is about grandeur. Like, you know, you have to start to really pull yourself into that song, okay? The buildup is intense, okay? I'm saying okay a lot because that song means a lot to me. If you have seen the Tandy Iman Dupree 2001 Miss, what is it, Miss Gay Black America video online, and I will post it in this, the, in the links that I have for you to see, that bitch came from the fucking ceiling and landed dead in a split while lip syncing, still on the fucking beat. And and the performance continued after that into more wah, 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 booms. Do you understand me? Okay, so when you see something like that and you're like, oh my God, that song will forever be that performance for me. I go, so bring it. You know what I mean? I'm like, let's let's see it now in an Aja style and in Kimura style. Now I was, let's be real, Kimura, I wasn't expecting you to go ham to holding on for a hero. Aja, I was ready for it. The moment Aja took off the coat and gave you long arms, walked to the back, I said, uh-oh, that's Alyssa. Now, I mean, it's not Alyssa's standard move, but Alyssa is known for walking to the back of the stage and then getting ready to go. But that's how you start to use the whole fucking stage. I feel you, Aja. I would have done the same damn thing. I'm going to the back and going all the way to the front. You're going to go full fucking show for me. When Aja went into the top, 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 boom, stop, I said, there it is. Game over. She's about to go in. There was one point where she did a kick up and then just, did that. Now, when you do that, that's where you just want to do the kick and you almost give a fake drop to like give the people gasping and you just continue on with your moves. Now, I could have swore she was going to drop. I thought she was. I thought she was going to go into shablam. That didn't happen. I was thinking maybe because Kamora literally like dropped right behind her and she didn't want to mess her back up or the mic that was still attached while she was doing all of this that then later was starting to come out. 
But Aja was building up the energy. I just felt like her nails were getting in the way. And that wig, if that girl had a long, little, nasty, little ponytail, it would have been on and popping. But I will say she did the damn deed. When that last up kick, shablam, drop. It was, that was on it. It was on beat. I said, okay, there we go. There we go. But that was where I, I wanted... If Kennedy Davenport or Chi-Chi Devane had did that song, what the hell do you think would have happened? It would have been a massacre. It would have been... <sighs> if Chi-Chi Devane and Kennedy Davenport lip-synced against each other to that song. <sighs> I got so excited. Okay. Sorry, that was... Oh, like, can we have... Can we get those two on All Stars 3, please? Can we please? And I don't want them to even lip-sync against each other. Like, but if they did... Oh, or if Trinity K. Bonet, Trinity K. Bonet, Chi Chi Devane, and Candy Davenport, ooh, Laganja Estranja, think of another like real, oh, I mean, no, 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 Detox is, is like more mouth extreme lip, lip sync artist versus like dance. You have to get another dancer in there. And I mean, oh yeah, okay, let me, back on topic, back on topic. I'm, I'm starting to get into fancy lip syncs here. Um, but Aja did what she had to do. Aja, you're safe. Kamora Black, you gotta go home, girl. She left saying, I'm still pretty. And it was like, you still are, bitch. And that was the end of the episode. Tell me who your favorites are. Who was your top three? Did you have a different top three? I had a little bit of a different top three. Who was your bottom three? And also, what did you like from this episode? Guys, I'm sorry I had to make this so short. It just took me so long to record this. And I got so frustrated. I was like, I have just got to get out the content I want to get out. Versus me just spewing a whole bunch of whatever the fuck about the episode. For the Untucked review, I'll probably be posting that Saturday night. So stay tuned Saturday night. I'll be waiting for everyone to watch it Saturday morning and afternoon. And then I'll give it a little bit of time in the evening. And then later in the evening at night, I'll post my recap as well on the Untucked episode so we can get into that. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again for subscribing. For my new subscribers, I love you so much. Thank you for being a part of this. This is a great place for us to talk and to have a good time. And I'm sorry I had to put this together so quickly. <laughs> but tomorrow, I'm going to be going way more into detail. So please stay tuned. Love you guys. Have a good night.